Blair of the Mounties. We present episode 30 in the dramatic series Blair of the Mounties, being the second part of Lord Waverton's dilemma. In the course of his practice as a private detective in London, Blair is engaged by Lord Waverton, British Minister of the Air, to investigate a mysterious burglary which occurred at Lord Waverton's residence near Coombe Seaton in Devonshire. In cooperation with the county police, Blair goes to work. Our scene opens at Ashley Cottage, the residence of Dr. Craig Holland, where we find Blair, McLean of the county police and Dr. Holland discussing the case. What does he say, McLean? I was just talking to the manservant. He says Professor Swartz will be glad to see you any time. Well, that's fair enough. Now let's go over this case and see if I've got it right. What time was it when Lord Waverton shot at those burglars? It was night before last, about 11.45. Hmm. They were at the safe in the library at Waverton Manor. His lordship fired at them as they ran away. Yes. Then Dr. Holland here is kidnapped by two men and taken to attend a man who's been shot. When was that, Doctor? Uh, just after midnight, the same night. That's something. It means that the house where you treated these men couldn't be far from Waverton Manor. It certainly is something. Don't you see, no, that... Hold on, Mac. We'll have that later. I think I see what you're driving at, but let's get the whole story. Now, the next thing is that a man is found dead on the moors. Two bullets in him. The body is badly smashed up, which indicates that he's been dropped from a plane, as there are no tracks near the body. And don't forget, he's connected with a burglary. The bullets were fired from Lord Waverton's gun. Yes, that's important. But the most important thing is to find this place that Dr. Holland was taken to. This airplane theory indicates some place where there's a landing field. That's what made you think of Grayston Hall, eh, Mac? Of course. This old Professor Swartz has a couple of airplanes and a landing field on his property. And uh, what you're going to say just now is that Grayston Hall isn't far from Lord Waverton's place, isn't that it? Certainly. The two properties join each other. All right. It looks good. We'll take Dr. Holland along to see Professor Swartz. You say you can tell if it's the place you went to the other night? I'm certain of that. Then let's go. Is Professor Swartz at home? Yes, sir. He is expecting you, sir. Will you come this way? Just a moment, McLean. You better step along. Look at that landing field. Dr. Holland and I will go in. Yes, sir. This way, gentlemen. Ah, uh, come in, gentlemen. Professor Swartz, my name is Blair, and this is Dr. Craig Holland. Surely not the Dr. Holland who wrote that interesting book on nervous lesions. Uh, yes, uh, that is my work, Professor. Excellent. I'm delighted to meet you, Doctor. And to what, uh, gentlemen, do I owe the pleasure of this visit? Uh, Professor Swartz, I am acting with the county police in connection with the death of a man found on Dartmoor yesterday. You've heard of it, no doubt. Very distressing, my dear sir. No, I had not heard. You see, I never read the papers. I see. This man had two bullets in him. Also, the body was so badly smashed up that we conclude he'd been dropped from an airplane. A very intelligent deduction, my dear inspector. But I fail to see how it concerns oh, me. Oh, that's quite simple, Professor. You own a private landing field. You maintain two airplanes and have several men in your employ. So, I begin to see. But you will forgive me if I say that the idea of any of my good people shooting a man and dropping him from an airplane, it's absurd. No doubt. Let me say, Professor, that we're not looking for a murderer, merely for the people associated with this mysterious occurrence. Ah, I see. Uh, and uh, just as a matter of form... I'd like your permission to search this house and ground. By all means, I'll ring for my men. Yeah. And uh, perhaps, Dr. Holland, uh, while our friend Inspector Blair is looking for all these terrible secrets, you will remain for a chat with me. Well, uh, no, if you don't mind. Uh, I'll accompany the inspector. Hmm. Are you too interested in uh, criminal investigation, my dear doctor? Not exactly. That is... Uh, you uh, rang, sir. Yes, uh, Fisher. Uh, show these gentlemen uh, whatever they wish to see. I'd like to look at the rooms on the ground floor. This way, sir. What's this room on the left in the passage? Just a minute, sir. It is just a storeroom, sir, where we uh, store odd furniture and crockery. Hmm. Nothing in here, Doctor. Mm, that's funny. And yet I could have sworn that this was the room. Uh, what? What? Never mind. Let's see the other rooms. The... Uh, other rooms are the library, 
The door is open. You can look if you like. Yes. Full of books, I see. I don't think there's any use of looking further, Inspector. I've seen all I want. That's all? All right. Let's go back to the professor. Uh, he is in the hall, sir. I, well, gentlemen, did you find any clues? Any mysterious blood stains or... No, um, no, nothing at all, Professor. As I said, it's uh, just a matter of form. Precisely. Very interesting profession you follow, my dear Inspector. This searching of people's houses and peeping through keyholes, it must be very uplifting. Not everybody to their trade, uh, Professor. So, perhaps I can persuade you gentlemen to remain for lunch. Sorry, Professor. It's very kind of you, but uh, not today. Well, then some other time, perhaps. Well, Doctor, and you also, Inspector... I trust we shall meet again. I think that's very likely. Goodbye, Professor Swart. Goodbye, gentlemen. Bye. Oh, McLean. Yes, sir. Find anything? Uh, not much. There's a small single-seater plane in the hangar. I believe the professor has a bigger one somewhere, but it's not in the hangar. I see. Let's be going back to the cottage. Where's Dr. Holland? <laughs> there he is, looking at the flower border. Oh, doctor. Yes? Come on. Let's be getting along. And, uh, well, Doctor, what did you think of Professor Swartz? I don't know what to think. He's a pretty smooth old bird. Did you find anything in the house, Inspector? No, but Dr. Holland did. Isn't that right, Doctor? Mm -hmm. I'll say so. That's the house I went to night before last. I thought as much. Better let's have the story. Well, in the first place, there was that room we looked at. They've changed the furniture and put a lot of old junk in there. But it's the room where I treated that patient. Well, that's little use unless we could prove it, Doctor. Hold on. I don't know about that, but, uh, Doctor... You said there's one thing that made it dead certain to you. What's that? Well, you remember I looked at the flower border when we left the house? Yes. What of it? Well, the night I operated on that man, it struck me I might need something to identify the place. The window of the room was slightly open at the bottom. So when I got the bullet out, I dropped it through the window into the flower border. Here it is. Good. You better take that, McLean. If it's from the same gun as those two you got from the man on the moors, why, the whole thing ties up. A fat lot of good that'll do us. There'll be an open verdict at the inquest, and we'll have the papers on our track for another unsolved crime. <laughs> Too bad, McLean. I must say this is all great to me. Uh, well, perhaps Inspector Blair will explain it. I'll be getting back to headquarters if there's nothing else you want. I think just now, McLean. Tell the truth, I'd just as soon you were out of the way for a bit. <laughs> Who's that? Tell the truth, I'm expecting a visit from our friend of this morning, Professor Swartz. I don't think he'll come while you, you're here. Well, whatever you say, sir. You let me know if there's anything you want. Sure, I'll be phoning this evening. Goodbye, Mac. Goodbye to you, sir. Look here, Blair. I don't want to be inquisitive about this business. Uh, the whole thing is a mystery to me, but uh, all I want to do is to just be of assistance. Fine, Doctor. As a matter of fact, I want to talk to somebody, and I'm going to take you into my confidence. I suppose the whole thing does look funny to you. Why, yes. What is this burglary, and why should the police be shielding the murderer of that man on the moor? There isn't any murderer. Didn't Lord Waverton tell you the story? Not a thing. I went to the police to report that strange business of the patient. Lord Waverton took me to London with him and turned me over to you. That's all I know. Yes, you see, there were two men in this attempted burglary. Lord Waverton shot at them both. Evidently, one of them died. The other one, I believe, is the man you treated at Greyston Hall. But why should Lord Waverton want to keep it secret? Because these men were after government papers, air defense plans. It wasn't an ordinary crime. Oh, I see. But then this professor, who is he? I have an idea he's a very important man in the world of espionage. What you call a big shot in your country... Well, but why can't they grab him and be through with it? Surely that's the thing to do if he's a German spy. Yes, he's a German apparently, but not necessarily working for Germany. Well, what do you mean? You see, Holland, this business of obtaining secret information on armaments and so on is no longer done in the old way. Swartz is evidently in the spy business for an international firm. He's probably known to the British authorities and has supplied information to them. You mean he's immune from arrest? To some extent, yes. Hmm. I was put on the job by Lord Waverton. I'm reporting to him direct. It looked funny to me, hiring a private detective when they have plenty of police and military intelligence people available. But I'm beginning to see the answer. Mm, that's a funny one. And Lord Waverton is head of the air service in England. Yes, there's a nigger in the woodpile somewhere. Hmm. That's why I'm hoping Swartz will make a move. I think he has the answer. Hello, what's this? Hmm. <laughs> Looks like a car. Gosh, your guess was right. There's the professor coming to pay a call. I thought so. Hmm. See those two men with him? Pretty tough-looking birds. Oh, it's all right. There'll be no trouble, Doctor. That's just protection. Good Lord, and this is England. <laughs> uh, Professor Swartz to see Dr. Blair. Well, gentlemen, we meet again. 
Good afternoon, Professor. I beg your pardon, Dr. Holland. Please don't believe me intruding in returning already your call of this morning. May I speak for a few minutes to Inspector Blair alone? What do you say, Blair? Ah, if you don't mind, Holland. Right. Go ahead, then. I'll be outside if uh, you need me. Sit down, Professor. Thank you. Inspector, suppose we come to business. Fine. Let me put my cards on the table. You and I are acquainted with the etiquette of the Secret Service, aren't we? Etiquette, did you say? Well, then let us say the customs. All right. That was a pretty crude job you pulled at Lord Waverton's the other night. Ah, uh, do not misjudge me, my friend. It was done in my absence and against my wishes. Some of the people with whom I walk are not experienced. Glad to hear it. I gave you credit for more ability. Thank you. And yet who would expect such a thing? This lot of Waverton, a cabinet minister who shoots at burglars. And hits them. Oh, yes. And a man who engages his own secret agent. What? Oh, yes, my good friend. I know all about this little job of yours. The agent of this modern ritual, you. <laughs> it is, I confess, a little awkward. This lot of Waverton is dangerous. Mm, like that, eh? So you've been up to some more little tricks somewhere. Had it, Professor? Perhaps. But come. Oh, why waste time? I have a proposal to make. <laughs> Sounds like old times, Professor. Well, what do you want and what have you got? My friend, I want a true copy of the air defense plans drawn two days ago. I also want immunity from arrest till I leave England. Mm, you wouldn't like the crown jewels thrown in, would you? That is no joke, Inspector. Well, what have you got? I have the means to ruin in one instant the public career of Rod Waverton and his private happiness also. Everything in life that he holds dear. Oh. You must hold a good hand, my friend. You will bet I do. I hold a good hand, and so I play for high stakes. All right, I'll see you, Professor. Listen, then. You can go back to your employer and tell him that in my employ, as a secret agent working against England, is the man Delancey, the real husband of the woman who calls herself Lady Waverton. What? But he's, he's dead long ago. No, he is alive. I can produce him, or I can... Keep him out of sight. I see. That's bad, I admit, but not quite strong enough, Professor. No. Then I go a little further. Also in my employ is a woman, guilty of treason against this country. What? Someone who is very near and dear to Lord Waverton. What you mean? I mean Lady Waverton. You have proof of this? <laughs> the proofs, my dear inspector, will be in your hands when I have his lordship's word that it is a bargain. Yes, that is a good hand. I'll give you his answer tomorrow. You have heard episode 30 in the dramatic series, Blair of the Mountains. The third and concluding part will be presented in episode 31 of this series.